Ladies and gentlemen, the pre-patch is here and Restoration Shaman got a lot of changes to their talent tree, which is probably the reason this is one of the most anticipated classes as voted by you in one of the recent polls that I did on this channel. I got quite a few questions asking what build to play in Mythic Plus, and people on my Discord suggested just go with whatever Wohat has as a default build. So I went to check what that build actually is, and I didn't even play it, because it's simply said bad. Instead, I went ahead and played several different builds on live servers right now with the pre-patch active, so in this video we're gonna go through them and figure out which ones are good and bad. Starting with the class tree, this is what I've used in most of the runs, and let me know that it is afflicted weak, which means that I have poison cleansing totem and improved the spell, which you can easily drop if you don't need them for the specific dungeon, and instead you can pick up the earth elemental and the talent below that to use as an extra defensive. I've also made a relatively big mistake by picking Refreshing Waters, which increases the effectiveness of healing search on yourself, instead of picking enhanced imbues in builds that run earth living weapon, as that would definitely bring you more value overall. Other than that, everything else on the left side is pretty straightforward. Moving on to the restoration tree, first let's mention that there are two nodes here that you must pick, and that would be Ascendance and Urden Harmony. The default build is missing the second, so that tells you a lot, and it also has Downpour selected which honestly is pretty damn bad in Mythic Plus, as you're never going to hit everybody in your party with it, and many times you're gonna cast your healing rain, but you're not gonna activate the downpour, simply because you don't need it at that point. The other important note to make here is that I'm gonna be using the three talents connected to Primordial Wave on the left hand side in all the builds. Yes, I know, I'm not a fan of Primordial Wave myself, but the cooldown now is just 30 seconds, and the value that you get from it is tangible, meaning that you can feel the difference every time you cast Primordial Wave, as long as you set it up correctly. And that is not the case for other talents like Earth Living Weapon or Earthen Wall Totem. I will say though that the Tidewater's talent above Primordial Wave is pretty damn bad, but there's no better way to get to Primordial Wave, so if you decide to play without those two, you can easily invest those two points somewhere else, and you have plenty of options to do that, as you're going to see that I'm gonna be juggling two points left and right all the time in the different builds. So feel free to steal any of the ideas presented there. For the first experiment, I decided to take up Mana Tide Totem and Earthen Wall Totem without playing any capstone talents apart from the Primordial Wave and without picking Earth Living Weapon. I've run this in a plus 14 Asia Vault, and if you're interested, you can watch the full run following the description of this video to my secondary channel. And the first thing that I've noticed is that I didn't actually need the Mana Tide. Yes, it's the end of the season, my shaman is pretty geared, so I don't need the extra mana, and that might change on a tyrannical week with a very long boss fight, or when we go into the war within and the gear is a little bit behind, so there might be situations where actually you want to pick the mana tide, but overall I decided that I don't need that talent. As for the talent below that empowers your healing surges and makes them instant cast, I force myself to drop the mana tide few times just so I can use them, and they're not bad, but having 3 healing surges is just too much and a little bit weird, as you can find some good usages if you have to spam heal your tank, or there's some specific spot healing required, but overall if the group is taking heavy AoE damage, that's not the button that you wanna press and rely on. So long story short, both the mana tide and the healing surges are nice addition, but you can definitely play without them as well. As for the earthen wall totem, that brings a little bit of value and it's highly dependent on how much melee you have in your group. In this case we only had one ranged and I would force myself to stay inside of the EWT, and at the end of the run it would do about 3% of my overall healing, but this number of course could be a lot worse if you're heavy on ranged casters. I guess that's normal since the idea behind this totem is to be a raid talent, and it also adds an extra button that you have to press in Mythic Plus, but it's one of the only two ways to reach Earthen Harmony, 
but you can also easily consider the other option which is the earth living weapon that we're gonna be looking at next. Before we do that, here's a screenshot of the healing breakdown that I had in this run. The experiment continues with Neltaras plus 14 where I drop the mana tide and the earthen wall talents to pick up earth living weapon and deeply rooted elements. It's worth noting that to get the later you also need to pick improved earth weaving weapon, which is an extra talent point and keep in mind that I'm still not running weapon imbues on the left hand side of the talent tree and I'm also not running the regular weapon imbues which increase your haste or critical strike. The best thing about this build was that I had two buttons less to press as I didn't have Monetite and I didn't have Erdenwall Totem and that definitely felt nice. However, I quickly started to regret picking up deeply rooted elements, maybe because I'm not a huge fan of this talent anyway, but I got too many bad procs where I didn't need the healing from the Ascendants, yes I got a few good ones as well, and that ratio could definitely be improved if you are not pressing Riptide at the end of the pools or to do maintenance healing or to top people off in between pools, but even if you do that, at the end of the day it's still RNG and it's not something that you can rely on in tough situations. If somehow you have the two extra points to reach and take that talent, by all means do so, but even the point for DRE itself could be better invested elsewhere, let's say Erdenwald Totem. As for the earth living, here's the breakdown at the end of the run, it did about 4% of my overall healing, which sounds more than Erdenwall Totem, but keep in mind that now I'm spending 2 points to get the earth weaving weapon compared to the one for Erdenwall Totem, and you're still going to get some value from the regular weapon in Buse if you're not running the earth living weapon, so I would say that the numbers are pretty close, but the earth living weapon is not an extra button and it also doesn't care if you have heavy, ranged or melee in your group. For the next build in this Knockwood plus 12, I decided to try and pick another capstone talent in the form of High Tide. This one is pretty hard to reach because it's hidden behind two different two pointers and I opted for Ancestral Awakening, which forced me to drop Deeply Rooted Elements, the improved Earth Living Weapon, and I still needed an extra point so I decided to drop Torrent which for this particular key was probably a mistake because I could have easily dropped Ancestral Vigor as well, as this talent brings a lot of value in higher keys, but it's not that useful in lower keys where nothing is basically one-shotting you. As for how this build actually played, having the extra power from High Tide for your chain heals definitely felt very nice, especially for this dungeon, but I also felt that at the same time I'm giving up too much because of the Ancestral Awakening talent, as that didn't do that much healing as you're going to see in just a second. I think that if they add an extra connection between Tidebringer and High Tide, that's gonna be perfect because it's going to free up the two points from Ancestral Awakening and you can get back Torrent and probably improved Earth Living Weapon. The Ancestral Awakening definitely felt like a scam because it did about 2% of my overall healing for the two talent points that I'm spending for it and you get more value easily from Earth Living Weapon and Erdenwall Totem that are both one point talents. Also, Earth Living Weapon did some work again, although I didn't have the improved talent, so at the end of the day it's definitely possible to run that without the second talent and spare a point there as well. So for this last run in Holes of Infusion plus 13, I picked a build with all the conclusions that I've made so far, namely I definitely did not like deeply rooted elements and high tide was nice but it was too expensive to get as I didn't like ancestral awakening. The mana tide talents also didn't seem that lucrative so I decided to pick back up earth weaving weapon and earthen wall totem. Keep in mind that you can easily drop the improved earth weaving weapon and the earthen wall totem to get the mana talents instead. As I mentioned, that might be the case for some specific dungeons or especially when we're leveling up in the War Within and we need mana because our gear is going to be much worse. Here's also a quick breakdown of the last run. Here the Earthenwall Totem didn't get much value because the only melee in this group was actually the tank. So in scenarios like that, I would probably recommend dropping this point and investing it somewhere else as even the improved healing tight totem talent would have brought more value in this case. 
And to summarize everything, here's the final build that I'm running. You can copy it from the description of this video as well. And keep in mind that you can use those same talents and then keep building on top with the hero talents once you start leveling in the War Within. Let me know in the comments below if you like this build and are you going to use some of the Wiggle points that I mentioned previously in the video. And of course, keep an eye on this channel for future updates and more content related to Restoration Shaman and of course the rest of the healers in the War Within. Thanks for watching and I'll get out of here.